first dude, man, was uh, Jalen Carter, uh, number 88 out of Georgia. We know he's viewed as the top D-line prospect. A lot of people mocks have him going number one overall. And I get it. Um, number one, when you think about him, man, the size is there. He's a 6'3", 300, but he's crazy athletic. Plays up and down that line of scrimmage, man. Inside, D-tackle. They bump him out. Yeah, it doesn't look <clears throat> fat. Yeah, yeah. You know, like Aaron <laughs> Donald. Yeah, yeah. He's somehow, it like, just good. absolutely, like, chiseled. But he he's, looks, he's like, good. nose tackle, interior defensive line, but and like, just But, like, filthy after. athletic, like, I watch him. I'm just like, yo, how do you move and you're nimble, but you're crazy strong, you are <clears throat> you pass the eyeball test. To me, I think that he can play any scheme, 3-4, nose tackle, 5 technique, DN. You can put him in a 4-3, he could play the 1, he could play the 3. You can even bump him out there into the 7 slash 5. I <clears throat> think he plays that well. Then when you also talk about him versus the pass versus the run, he's disruptive against both. He commands double teams consistently. Like, you got to account to slide protection. Yeah, like, not a lot of negative about him, man. He could be stout front side. He can play with good effort on the back side. The only, like, things that I even put as potential negatives – or just that <clears throat> I feel like at times I didn't even sit, bro. God dang. Go for it. <laughs> um, there we go. <clears throat> but no, I feel like at times with uh Jalen, <clears throat> he's one of those dudes that because of how athletic he is, it will hurt his technique at times. And when you see that happen, it's more so versus some of those double teams versus the run, where it's that concept of if it was a one-on-one, he's already anticipating his arm over move that he's, like, crazy good with. But it's not always the most fundamentally sound. So when you're talking about a double team, some of those times they do get movement on him. And it's just one of those things where he just has to know when to fold him, you know what I mean, and just cut loose. And just say, you know what, man, I'm giving up movement, sit on his bar stool, cause a pow versus he'll still be trying to fight it. And even though he'll come out of it down the line, he didn't gave up. Three, four, five yards. The gap integrity is yeah. off a little bit. So it's like one of those things. And to me, I think that's something that you can coach and it's a feel thing. It's like, yo, man, when you start giving up one, two steps, bro, just bar stool it. Sit down. But because of how dominant he was at that level, I can understand that being very difficult for him to like admit to at times when he's getting his double team. But other than that, I'm like, <clears throat> other than that, I'm like, man, this dude, he can do everything that you want him to do. So I was like, it makes a lot of sense why he's that guy, you know, that is viewed as the number one or the uh, the guy that should be going number one overall. So I was like, I definitely understand that, man. I was feeling like he's a combo of the other two prospects we're going to be talking I about. I would agree. But yes. I actually think I got to give a little credit to my pit guy. Canty might have a little bit oh. more technically sound game oh, no, in terms talk. of some of his Absolutely. moves and like Absolutely. what he has in his bag. I did want to ask you, how did you feel about the stats, though, because when you look at necessarily the numbers, 32 tackles, three sacks, two forced fumbles, and three PBUs, or pass deflections. Now, when I first looked at that, it was kind of like, dang, I would expect, like, more productivity. But then when I actually, like, watch some of his games, I mean, dude, he playing two quarter stops. Lucky to get him to the third quarter, you know what I mean? And then it was like they was literally just taking them out because they would be up by, like, a lot of points. So that was, like, my other issue. So I'm like, okay, maybe that's part of why the numbers aren't as gaudy as you would think they should be. Like, when you think of Kalaja Kansi, mm-hmm. he has numbers. But, like, you would think that this guy should have, like, crazy numbers. But that was kind of, like, where I was stuck with just that part in terms of him being productive versus just being crazy with potential right now. Yeah. I get what you're saying. That's part of it, having to sit out at some point in the game. Yeah. But also, right, whenever you watch it, because I was thinking the same thing. I'm like, damn, they're they're kind of disrespecting Canty here. Mm-hmm. I know they're saying Jalen Carter's this number one overall pick. He should be mm-hmm. picked in the top five. How about we give some more respect for Canty? Now, I get Canty's more undersized than Carter, but yeah. productivity is productivity. I think the things that are in Carter's favor – would be going up against the SEC week in and week yeah. out. But also, you just have to watch him. Like, if you just watch him, like, he's, so he's, a, he's a, he looks like a man bro. amongst boys out there. Yeah, like, you'll watch how he collapses the offensive line at times, and you're just like, bro, even though he ain't make the tackle, he made it so easy for this guy that made the tackle. 
I'm just like, yo, you got the stab, but he made the play right here. Like that shows up a good amount as well with him. Yeah, that I I think more. I feel more concerned about the other dude than Carter in yeah. terms of productivity. The Clemson yeah. guy, yeah. to be honest with you, because it's similar. They only have like, like what two or three sacks, something like mm-hmm. that. But yeah, with Carter, I, I just I just think he jumps off the screen whenever you watch him. Yeah, I would agree. I definitely would agree with him, man. Um, yeah, like I said, it's not a lot of negative up there. If I want to nitpick. Okay, I like him better as a penetrator or the one-on-one guy in pass rush versus when they use him as the looper. When somebody else goes, he has to wait and then go because I think it takes away from how explosive he is and how powerful he is. And it allows the uh, the offensive guy to kind of get a chance to, like, get back and get set up for him. I think that's probably, like, a knock. But other than that, I'm like, yo, I ain't got to put him as a looper. Yeah, maybe Just he could improve his technical <laughs> yeah. skills a little bit right, more. But. Like, that part. But that's nitpicking, you know? But in terms of who you feel confident about, it's like I get why people are as confident as they are about him. Like we don't always say that with some of these prospects. It's like, yeah, they got this dude rated pretty high. We're like, I don't really agree with this. With this dude right here, though, it's like I, I can see why. 